All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be working on the aimbot. Our aimbot at the moment is pretty simple since we're just snapping to our target player. So we're going to add some smoothing, but we're also going to be doing an FOB circle and changing some functions now that we have access to the MVP matrix or the world to screen functions, whichever do you prefer. But anyways, let's get started. So we're going to start off with the easiest thing, which is just updating our settings. We're going to add a couple things here. Obviously, we're going to need to check if the aimbot is enabled. We're going to need to check if we're doing smoothing, we're going to need to check the smooth amount or smoothing amount. Oh, sounds better. We're going to also check another Boolean. We're checking if we're using the FOV in another one and another one to check if we're actually drawing the FOV circle, which just shows the circle of what your FOV is. It's pretty self-explanatory. This. FOV circle isn't going to be based on angle, but it's going to be based on the actual size of our monitor or gamer solution. I'm just going to copy this and set the defaults. Everything should be true. We're going to set the smoothing amount by default to one, which I think works pretty well. And the FOV for me works for 180, but my resolution might be different than yours. So you might need to mess around with this. Once we draw the FOV circle, it's going to be really easy to tweak this value, but for now, 180 should be fine for you as well. Set everything to true. And now we're going to do our new FOB function. It's going to be bool is in FOB. So this one's going to be a bit different since we're using a world to screen function. We can only calculate as in our FOB for ourselves. So this is going to take the position on which we're actually looking. So vector three screen location would be the screen location of the player we're targeting. And it's just going to be a simple if abs and we're actually going to have to add one more variable we're going to go up here and we're going to add constant vector three center screen position and this would be your monitor resolution not your monitor resolution but your game's resolution so for me it's going to be 1080 over 2 since we want the center 640 over 2 which i think is the default so i'll keep this for resolution now let's go back to our function and it's going to be the absolute value of our center screen position the distance to that point screen location that we're passing in and then we're going to check if that it's less than the settings that aimbot fob if it's less we turn true otherwise it's not in the range so we turn false now that we have that we're going to go ahead and replace this function with a new one the new one's going to be using world to screen so it's going to be a lot less jittery than this one this one works when you have to estimate but now that we actually have the view matrix we don't have to do that anymore so we're just going to change this and it's going to be again we're going to it's kind of very similar to the old function so nearest player is null pointer nearest distance is a big float and our current distance it's going to be zero so we're going to iterate through all the players we're going to get the current player and set that to our index. We're going to then check if our player health is, of course, if he's alive or he's maybe he's spectating, then he's not a valid target. We're also going to check that he's actually not on our team because we don't want to be aiming at our teammates. After that, we can actually start doing our world to screen functions. So it's kind of similar to the ESP, but for this one, we're just going to get the head position and we're going to convert that to the head screen position using the world to screen function. Now using our is an FOB function, we're going to be checking if he's actually in our range. So we're going to be doing if settings, inbot, check an FOB, and he's not in the range, we're going to continue so he's not a valid target. Otherwise, we're going to be checking if our head screen position dot Z is less than zero, we're going to continue. So if he's behind us, we actually, you can put this behind. So if he's behind us, we're not going to be able to, to see him. So he's not valid target. Now we're going to set the head screen position dot Z to zero. Since right now we don't really care about our 3D distance. We only care about the 2D distance from our crosshair to the actual player. We don't care how far away they are actually from us. Then we're going to get the distance or the absolute distance of center screen position to our head screen position and now we're just going to check if it's the closest distance we've had so far. And that's pretty much it. And of course, we're going to have to return the nearest player. Now that we have that, let's actually work on the aimbot and do some smoothing. So 
So let's go up here and we're going to add some variables. We're going to have a new one. It's going to be load current in time is going to be equal to zero. We're going to have another one, which is clock T last aim time. We're going to set that to zero or not to zero. We're going to set that to our current time. Now you might be used to using time T, but since we're dealing with milliseconds, we can't use time T time T only works in seconds. This one works in milliseconds. So we also have to include uh, C time or clock. Otherwise we're going to get an error. And we also need new pointer, player pointer. And it's going to be our current target. Set it to no pointer by default. And now that we're here, let's make a new define since we're going to need this later. And it's going to be a minimum. It's going to return the minimum of two values. But instead of having to include std min, we can just make our own. It's pretty simple. It's going to take two arguments, A and B. If A is less than B, we're going to return A. If A is not less than B or is equal to B, we're just going to return B. Simple. So now that we have that, let me actually explain our aimbot. Smoothing is going to work. So first things first, our aimbot is no longer going to be needing a sleep statement. So if we go to our DLL main, right now we have a very messy aimbot on its own thread. So we're going to remove all of this. We cut it and put it here so we can have our delete or toggle menu working for now. Eventually we'll move that to another place. We're doing things step by step so it doesn't get really complicated really fast. And we're going to move this and we still want to sleep actually. What am I doing? So now that we're not actually sleeping during our inbot, said what we're going to do is we're going to go to our menu.cpp and right after our ESP, we're going to call that aimbot function. So ESP, maybe it would have been smarter to have aimbot on its own namespace. So make sure you actually put this inside our new renders, the start render and the end render, because we want to draw things in here as well. We're going to draw that FOB circle in there. So since we're not sleeping anymore, what we're going to be doing is, uh, let me pull up paint. So imagine this is our crosshair and imagine it's also in the center of the screen I just realized. And this is our target. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is where we want to aim and we're going to divide this into little sections. So imagine we want to aim to our target in exactly one second. So we're going to divide each clock frame into little segments. Of course, they're going to be a lot smaller than this because our CPU runs really fast, but what it's going to do, it's going to divide that distance into little segments and change that every single frame. Now, whenever we finish that, it's going to reset. So imagine our player, there's a, the player moves again. So here we have our little target and our another stickman. This, imagine he just teleported for now. And then we have, we're going to calculate a new little segment. And it's going to be divided into its own things again. And this, how many divisions we have here is dependent on how much smoothing we want. Except this happens every single frame, every time he moves. Hopefully that explains a bit. That doesn't make sense. It'll make sense when we actually code it. But I just wanted to give you a small overview, even if it doesn't do much. But anyways, um, let's go to our aimbot. The first thing we're going to do is the easiest which is just drawing the FOV circle. It's going to be very, very simple. So if settings aimbot draw FOV circle, we're just going to do add circle. It's going to draw it at the center of the screen and this key at the center of the screen. So it's going to be I am vector two center screen position dot X and center dot Y draw it based on the FOV, which is just the radius. And for the color, we want to do a white circle. I think this is white and we want the alpha to be half, like half transparent. And this is just the thickness, which 100 should work fine. If not, we can tweak that. If you wanted to, you could change this and make it a setting as well. But I don't think it's necessary since the circle is just going to be the outline of a circle. It's not going to be actually filled in. So it's not going to matter too much. So here, instead of just returning, we're actually going to check if it's our aimbot is enabled. So if settings, aimbot enabled. If we're not using the aimbot, we're going to set the current aim time to zero. So we're going to reset how long we've been aiming at that target for. We're going to set our last aim time to 
a new time, we're going to be using that to calculate how far we should move our mouse to the next position based on our ratio. This will all make sense in a second. And we also want to set our current target to null point in return, of course, because we're not actually calling the aimbot on that frame. We're going to set our target to get nearest entity world to screen. Our target, if we don't have a target, we're obviously going to return. And we're going to set new if statement. It's going to be if target. If the nearest player isn't our old nearest player, we're going to reset everything again. Basically the same thing we just called back here. And we're going to set the last time to clock as well. Now we're going to have a new time. It's going to be clock T now. It's going to be clock. We're going to use that minimum that we defined earlier. Plus equals static cast to float. Because clock T isn't a float by default, but we want to get a decimal. If you don't static cast to a float, it will just round to zero. Or just truncate to zero. Or truncate to one, which is terrible. So it's going to be now minus last time. Now minus last aim time, and we're going to divide that by clocks per second. This is dependent on your CPU, so make sure you actually use this macro and not just a constant. Even though you see a thousand here, it's probably going to be different for you. And we're going to set last time now, or last aim time. Now we're going to check the percent. The percent is going to be the minimum of current aim time over settings aimbot uh, smoothing amount and one. This is basically just making our percent not go above one. Now we're going to remove this. I don't think we really need this. Oops. We're going to change this to target angle just to make it a bit more clear. And we're also going to set our current angle for our smoothing. So current angle is going to be local player yaw, the pitch, and zero because we don't have a Z angle. If settings, settings aimbot smoothing, so first we're going to check if our percent is bigger than or equal to one. So this is going to make it so if the target moves and we already finished smoothing to him, it resets back to smoothing so it doesn't snap to him after. So what we're going to do now is set this current aim time to zero. So we're going to reset it. And we're also going to set the percent to one. It's going to reset back to zero on the next frame anyways, but we're just going to cap it out at one again. And then we're going to call this smooth angle function that we haven't made yet. And it's going to take a reference to the current angle, the target angle, and then the percent. Otherwise, if we're not using smoothing, then we're going to do the same thing we were doing before, which is just snapping right to the target. So it's going to be current angle equals target angle. And then here we're actually going to set the angles. So it's going to be so. The smooth angle function let's do that real quick it's going to be it's going to take a void smooth angle it's going to take a reference to vector three the vector reference to two and the percent first we're going to set the delta the delta is going to be the difference between to and from we're going to normalize that angle just to make sure it's within the range and it doesn't mess with the game after that we're going to update our froms dot x plus equals delta dot x times the percent so basically the ratio of how far we should move our mouse do that same thing for y and then we're going to normalize the angle again now there's an issue with this if we run this code as it is right now our aimbot will only be able to move to the right because we're only doing plus equals so what we need to do is to find a way that we can make our aimbot go to the left so we need to wrap around an our angle to the other side so it can go in that direction the way we do that is by changing our angle so if we do delta dot x if it's bigger than 180 so if it's on the other side we're going to subtract 360 to flip it over if it's smaller then negative 180 then we're going to do the same thing and we're going to flip over to the other side and so we need to do this for y because currently this is plus equals and if we're if our mouse is above them it won't be able to go down so we also need to calibrate this so if we look at our normalized angle this is in the range of 90 to negative 90 so the halfway point should be negative 45 or 45. So if delta y is bigger than 45, we're going to flip it over to the other side, which we're just going to subtract 45, and we're going to do the same thing for the negative value. Now this should work. 
Now that we have our aimbot finished, we can start adding those settings to our menu. So let's make a new function. Let's go over here and let's call it void aimbot settings. And it's going to do the same thing. And we can let Copilot do its thing. Be enabled, smoothing, smoothing amount, checking FOB, FOB, and draw FOB circle. Smoothing amount, we want between the ranges of 0.1 because we don't want it to be zero. And let's do 10. I think anything above 10 is just, it doesn't seem real. And our slider float for FOB should maybe start at 90. Remember, this is not degrees, this is the size of your screen. And let's do like 500. Let's build that. I think I, I don't think I missed anything. So let's test it out. Here's my saw cube. Let me join a game. 2v2 should be fine. And let's inject. And there's an FOV circle, and let's see if it actually smooths out. Um, before we do that, let me change our bot settings so they don't actually kill us, like they just did. And let's see. If he's not in an FOV, it shouldn't work. And if we get close to him, it smooths out. Perfect. It's a lot more believable now. This looks a lot better when they're actually moving too. Let's check our FOV circle. I forgot to add the menu here, but let's actually check how it looks while they're moving. And here it is. It moves pretty well. Oh, it's the same aiming. It's just smoothed out. So, whoops. There we go. It's a lot more believable. And the tracking constantly updates. So, even if you like walk super fast, it's still tries to snap back to him in a smooth way. Now let me switch weapons so you can see what an assault rifle actually looks like. It should be a lot better now. So it's not just like constantly setting it to the center of the player, it's like trying, constantly trying to get to that point where, to his head. If we press shift, let me show you again, and then we'll try this one FOB circle. Okay. So let's go back here and actually call our new settings menu. Let's do it right after ESP, so aimbot settings. And let's test that out. Right, so we're back here again. Let me disable them so we can actually mess around with the smoothing. So if we go here, let's go to aimbot and let's change the smoothing from the default, which is one. And let's make it 10. And we can obviously change the FOV circle. Let's leave it at 180, which I think works fine for this resolution. It's believable. So with 10, it goes a lot slower. But anything after 10 is just way too slow. So if we start up our bots again. Let's see how 10 actually looks. I guess you can tweak around with this. Um, Check FOB, obviously. What I like about drawing it like this is that if we change our weapon to... What I like about this new method of using world to screen functions for our FOB is that I can... It updates with scoped weapons. So right now, our FOB is pretty big. Like, he's in range. But if we scope in, he shouldn't be in range. But if we were using our other method, which based, is based on entity angles, he would be in range. So this is a lot better when you have uh, a lot of scope weapons in the game. But of course, it's a lot harder because in some games, the view matrix is a lot harder to find. But anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Um, next video, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. I might do a radar, radar hack, either with I'm UI or just using this one and just displaying enemies as well. We can also do a trigger bot, which we haven't done yet, or the intersect function, which obviously checks if they're visible and maybe change the color of the SP if they're not visible, or do some trace lines. We could also do some other type of types of hacks that are really common, like maybe some packet hacking, uh, like send kill packets or mess around with the console. But anyways, let me know if you have any suggestions or something specific you would want me to try to do with the cube. Um, but anyways, I'll see you on the next one.
Thanks for watching.